as a leader, do you experience increasingly unpredictable external changes? It could be in the markets, your competitors, technology, general business, as well as political environment. At the same time, your organization is facing internally common and uncommon problems. Your understanding of the situation and the decisions you make can sometimes hamper your organization growth or even accelerate its aging. You can't change adverse external events, but you can change how your organization faces them. You know that organizations go through different development stages. Some challenges you meet there are unique to a stage. If you can identify them, you can address them. How well you and your management team solve these predictable challenges can make the difference between your organization's success or failure. Navigating the internal challenges in each stage will make your organization better armed to respond to unpredictable external changes. So what are those development stages and the common problems faced here? Hello, this is Pierre Bienvenu from INPI. We are here to help remove anxiety from leadership as they gain greater clarity and control. Within Walking Distance is a series giving tips tools and reflections for leadership. If you are new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the links relevant to this video that you will find in the description box below. MP. So let's answer the question. I can't answer the question in the title, will your organization survive you? I just wanted to grab your attention. But I can point you in the direction to answer the question that will increase the chances of survival in your organization. What are the various development stages of an organization and what are the common challenges you may encounter in each of them? In the 70s and 80s, organizational researchers developed several models of organizational life cycle. They discovered a parallel between living organisms and organizations. Organizations follow development stages from birth to death. One of those researchers, Prof. Ichak Adizis, developed the corporate life cycle. Unlike living organisms, organizations can remain viable indefinitely. They need to sustain the balance between control and flexibility. This is the prime stage of the organization. The top oldest companies in the world are more than 1,000 years old. Nine of them are Japanese, and the oldest one is Kongo Gumi, a temple building contractor founded in 578. They have all adapted to change. As a leader, your goal is to bring the organization to its prime stage and strive to keep it in this position. Any following stage leads to eventual destruction. The key to attain prime and sustained balance between control and flexibility is managing ongoing change by solving problems and not avoiding them. It is the job of management to manage change, not to slow down the organization or to avoid problems. Problems don't go away, failing accelerates the organization aging process. An organization can have both normal and abnormal problems. They are different for each stage. Abnormal problems arise when someone or something in the company resists the changes. You could be the problem. Edward Deming is actually quoted saying that the problem is always at the top. Your skill set as a leader needs to evolve with the development phases of your organization. You are not perfect, but you can transform. Make transformation your competitive advantage. So in the context of this short episode, I'll briefly describe the 10 stages of the corporate life cycle. I've added some resources in the description section, should you wish to dig deeper. 
Not all organizations will follow exactly the steps, but you will recognize most of the traits. Courtship. Initially, the company exists only as an idea. Usually, there is a conflict of priorities focusing on making money or changing the world. Responsibilities are not clearly defined. Doubts and ambiguities are normal. An abnormal problem is when the founder is fanatically committed to the idea and gets out of touch with reality. During infancy, the company is established. Financial obligations are becoming real. It's time to show results, but productivity is low. And because the company is just figuring out how to function, this is why everyone, everyone is overworked and makes many mistakes. An example of abnormal problems is chasing sales volumes instead of focusing on the product. At the go-go year stage, the company's product becomes popular, focuses on sales growth. The founder trap often arises when many processes are tied to the leader. She starts to lack capacity and competence to follow everything. Examples of abnormal problems is selling a low quality product and poor internal communication. In the adolescent stage, the organization seems to be reborn. The focus has shifted from sales growth to profitability. Professional managers are hired. Examples of abnormal problems would be the company's founders refusing to transfer the responsibilities of management to hired managers and her inability to delegate authority. An organization that is in the prime stage has achieved a balance between control and flexibility. It knows what it is doing, where it is going, and how it will get there. It also enjoys both high growth and high profitability. The employees are aligned, competent, and engaged. All elements of the company are in harmony. Adesus calls this stage the fountain of youth. Once an organization reaches prime, the desire to live it all as it is is strong, which is the most severe trap. Leadership must work to sustain that position. It means raising the performance bar all the time to encourage behaviors of continuous improvement to grow and adapt to changing conditions. Failing to sustain prime starts the fall of the organization. Abnormal problems appear that leadership refuses to notice. Activity weakens. Relaxation pervades. The old methods that used to work are still used even though they are now outdated. People justify it with, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Then comes the aristocracy, when the company becomes an administration. Rituals are more important than results. Management deny losses and even hides the truth from the shareholders. It is not too late to change though. Then it is the recrimination stage. The blaming game starts. The organization has become political when the focus is on the who rather than the what. The customer is neglected. The organization is too busy fighting internally. Bureaucracy sets in when the rules are becoming more and more strict. There is little sense of purpose. The company is becoming less relevant to the market. The company only survives through a financial drip and dies when financial backers pull the plug. Wow, don't fall. So who wants to be in business? Your business faces a more and more unpredictable and risky world out there. Normal internal problems and abnormal internal problems. How then can an organization survive, grow, succeed and sustain? The constant here is change and manager's job is to manage change. Not only do they know how to solve problems, but also how to develop a culture of problem solving in the organization. I believe that a particular skill can increase the chances of your organization to survive you. 
It is adaptive for an unpredictable world. It is the scientific method of solving problems. The improvement kata is the subject of my previous video. Solving abnormal problems as they arise increases your organization likelihood to reach prime and remain there. The fountain of youth where there is empowered leaders, joy at work, loyal customer, and high profits. And this is the good quote for this episode. It Chuck Adizus wrote, the purpose of management, leadership, parenting, or governing, any form of organizational leadership, is to solve today's problems and get ready to deal with tomorrow's problems. And that means managing change. Isn't this beautiful? If you are one of the first three people able to identify the precise location of this view in Hard Bay, South Africa, you can meet with me for a free hour of leadership coaching. Just write the location in the comment section and send me an email at wwd at impi.solutions. Also, you may have a need to improve on your leadership skills, turn them into good habits, or you need support to transform your organization. I can help you. Feel free to connect. I'll be posting the next episode in two weeks. In the meantime, solve problems and lead well.